Hello everyone, welcome back. It's exciting to be back. It's been good to see how you've been watching the, the videos over the last few weeks and obviously we hope you enjoyed them. Today we have a very special guest on the channel and we're honoured to have Indian-born British chef Asma Khan um, sharing her fish mala curry um, recipe with us. Fish mala curry is fish and coconut milk basically but it's definitely so much more than that um, it's a quick recipe Asma uh, cooks this recipe for us in real time I think it's about nine minutes and it's just yeah it's quick delicious and and something else it's just it's such an exotic um, dish with so much history um, it's gone through generation this this type of dish so I personally cannot wait to cook this one myself tonight so before I hand over to Asma I just want to give you a bit of background about her Asma is the founder of the Darjeeling Express restaurant in London her restaurant started um, serving 12 guests at home serving Indian food from family recipes that go back to generations she's also was the first chef in spring 2019 that was featured on the Netflix show called Chef's Table. Some of you that watch Netflix or have Netflix might have heard about it already. Um, if you watch Netflix, definitely check it out. I've watched it myself. It's it's amazing, inspiring story. And um, it's the volume six, episode four, and it's called Asma Khan. So it should be easy to find, but let me know if you've got any questions. As I said, we're so lucky and thankful that we had Asma on the channel with us. And you can find the recipe in the description box below with the ingredients and the methods. I will also put her website um, in the description box below for you to just have a look at. It also features her cookbook on there. And for those of you who are interested, um, in addition to the recipe that um, Asma is showing today, she's also sent over um, another recipe for a type of flatbread that is made out of whole wheat flour. It's called Lachada Parafa. I hope I pronounced that correctly, I'm not sure. Um, so please let me know if you'd like to receive this um, recipe as well and I'll send it straight to you. Um, I guess this is for those of you who are interested in, in baking or just want to try something new. I, I might give it a go as well um, to eat with my fish malakari tonight. Guys, enjoy. Here you go. Hello, this is Asma Khan. I'm making a very special dish um, which is from a city where I was born, Calcutta. It's called uh, fish malai curry. And of course, at this time, not everybody can get fish, but you know, you could even make this with frozen fish or any kind of seafood, anything that cooks quickly, this will work for that. It's a very simple recipe. Other spices that you need are very uncomplicated. So you could, you know, really kind of, you could even make this with potatoes or, you know, make the gravy and then put boiled eggs in it. You could put tofu, slices of tofu, paneer if you can get it from the supermarket. The main thing is that this is a, a base which is uh, made of coconut milk and tomato puree and both of these things are available quite easily. So you shouldn't have too much of a problem. What you make, you know, you could, you know, of course, if you get fish, it would be brilliant. Prawns, scallops, anything, it can be frozen. Uh, you know, at this point, the main thing is that, you know, it's, it's a really beautiful gravy and you enjoy it with whatever you can get hold of. Okay, so I, I have rubbed this because, you know, really it should be 20 minutes. Um, rub the fish with, um, and this is cod, cod, um, with turmeric and a bit of salt. And the reason I've done that is actually it is uh, purification. Um, turmeric is rubbed on fish in Bengal uh, to kill the surface bacteria. And so it, it of course adds to the flavor because, you know, the salt and the turmeric is going in. But the main thing is medicinal. It is done to kind of heal any kind of, you know, if there's any infection, it kind of kills it. And um, so it's a kind of old, you know, old wives things that people do, but because I've always seen it being done, for me, I, I would not cook uh, any kind of traditional fish curry without uh, rubbing it and leaving it for a while for the turmeric to work. Right, so I'm going to, you know, the oil has to be quite high, but while the oil is heating up, I'm just going to explain the other ingredients. So of course, more turmeric and chilies, tomato puree. This is for the garnish. That's that's just ginger or garlic paste, coconut milk. And this is essentially uh, the onions that I have fried because otherwise we would have been in this video forever. Um, I have fried in advance and kept. 
So you need to get the onions from here to there. Uh, there are lots of uh, videos that you can see of how to do it. It's there in my cookbook as well. You gotta slow fry it. You gotta make sure all the onions are equal, equal in thickness or thin, whatever it is, to the best of your ability to make sure that you get something that looks like this, which will even, evenly cook through. Right, so I think hopefully uh, fish is ready to go. We'll still put it into the pan. The aim is not to uh, the aim is not to cook it. It needs to be just to seal it. Because you're going to cook it again in the coconut gravy. So I'm just sealing the fish, sealing in the moisture. You do not want, yeah, exactly. So this is it. You just want to get it out. Don't overcook it. So there's this beautiful color, golden color, which comes from the marinating with the turmeric. Right, so in this now, I'm going to add the brown onions, garlic ginger paste, more turmeric. But these chili, I mean, I like it a bit spicy, it really depends on your taste, how much chilies you want to put. So you need to just cook all of this too, put the tomato puree in. If you don't have tomato puree, use chopped tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, whatever. It's just some hot water. And so what the, what you want to achieve, so I have some salt now, is for the onions to break down. Remember that you have added salt to the fish. And if you put too much at this point, you're in big trouble because it's going to be very, very salty. So with all seasoning, you can always add more later. So basically, we've got to wait for what a lot of people ask me this question that how do you know that it's ready for you know the meat to be put back in or the vegetables to be put back, put back in? If you can take the camera to the edge, you can already see the oil is coming to the top. That is really the sign that it has actually cooked through. You want to see the oil coming to the top. And then, of course, visually you can already see the color has changed. It's uh, now has this kind of beautiful reddish, brownish, burnt look. And you can't smell it, but I can just tell you it just smells amazing because all the spices have gone through and the lovely caramelized onion has broken down. And there you can see the oil has come right to the top. You can see the oil sitting on the top. Now at this point, you put back the fish. So remember that you didn't want to overcook it. It's exactly for this because otherwise nothing can be worse than overcooked fish. You need to gently, literally poach it. You don't, you know, I'm, I'm always worried when I see so many uh, Indian recipes where the fish is overcooked. It's completely sacrilege. You should never overcook fish. You need to make sure that it is moist and tender. And then, the final touch, the coconut milk. You need to add a touch of sugar to it. And you can see this beautiful marbled effect. And you need to just essentially reduce it a bit. You do not want to overcook the fish. And the moment you see again the oil coming on the top, 
So this is a sign that your fish is ready. I'm just gonna be give it a few more seconds. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of poaching it. I'm pouring the hot gravy on the top, cooking it very gently. You know, of course, if you have a very large piece of fish, you need to cook for a bit longer. But here, I'm, I don't. So let me just plate this. It has a really beautiful coconutty smell. And this kind of gravy is really nice. You can, uh, you know, it, you, it goes great with rice. If you don't have rice and you're not a rice eater, you can have this with, uh, with bread. It, I mean, there's no hard and fast rules. And uh, so I'm going to garnish it with some green chilies. Of course, you know, I'm lucky I've had green chilies, some tomatoes. sprig of coriander and there it's ready this is Bengali fish malai curry and it's and I have cooked it in real time it's very very quick and you can use any kind of seafood to make it